Hi everyone and welcome to the internet. What we're going to be doing in today's lesson is having a look at the second group on the periodic table you need to know about, which is group 7, the halogens. Hopefully by the end of today's lesson you're going to be able to describe the halogens and also explain their reactions. To start off though, we've got five questions based around our previous lesson. So have a go at answering these five questions in your book. I'm going to give you about three minutes to do that. So, first one, group one are also known as the alkali metals. They've got one electron in their outer shell. The word equation for lithium reacting with water is lithium plus water makes lithium hydroxide plus hydrogen. The balance symbol equation for potassium reacting with water is 2K plus 2H2O makes 2KOH plus H2. You get one mark if you've got the actual formulas right and the second mark if you got the balancing right. So they're two independent marks of each other. And then for number five, they get more reactive the further down the group, one mark, because the outer shell is further from the nucleus, second mark. So there's a weaker force of attraction between the electron and the nucleus, third mark, meaning it's lost more easily, fourth mark. So add up your scores. Today it's out of four, six, seven, eight, nine. So give yourself a score out of nine. So we'll start off with the basics. See if you can fill in the missing words from the bits on the screen here. Make sure you obviously get the rest of the sentences written down and the all important sentence at the bottom for me. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to get that done.
Let's make sure we've got all the right words in the right places then. So group seven are also known as the halogens. Hopefully we all got that. There's a big hint in the title today. So group seven, known as the halogens. And the halogens are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. Do remember that in any chemistry exam, you do not have to memorize any chemicals. You have a periodic table given to you. So all you need to do is remember that group seven is on the right hand side of the periodic table. And obviously it's labeled with the numbers at the top because they're incredibly kind on your exam papers. And you just need to find it and then you can just read them off. The key point to remember, and this is the point that really does bug me when we don't remember this because you throw away so many marks on chemistry papers by forgetting this last point, that all of the halogens are found as diatomic molecules. So this means that they go around as pairs of atoms. So di meaning two and atomic obviously atoms. So two atoms joined together. So whenever we write the formulas for fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, or astatine, we always need the subscript two. So the little two in the bottom right, because that tells us there's two of them joined together. And the reason that you will throw away so many marks if you don't remember that is because as soon as you then have to write any kind of balance symbol equation with a halogen in it, if you don't put that little two in the bottom right, your formulas are wrong and your balancing is always going to be wrong. So you've thrown away all the marks. So that last point, highlight it, stick it in a box, do something to make it stand out and please learn it now and save yourself the trauma later on of throwing away easy marks. Now, next thing I'd like you to do is to copy the table that I've given you on the screen there, which is going to be looking at two of these key properties of our group seven elements. So we're going to look at the state at room temperature, so solid, liquid or gas, and we're going to have a look at their color. So set out that table. You don't have to know them off the top of your head. I'm going to give you some pictures in a moment. And then what we're going to do is have a go at answering the question at the bottom about what trends you can see. I'll leave this table up for about another minute and a half so you can copy it out. Obviously, if you need a bit longer, hit pause until you've got the table ready. Then we're going to have a look at some pictures of these different elements so you can fill out the table. So top left is chlorine, top right is iodine, middle bottom is bromine, and then the bottom right is astatine. So see if you can fill out your table with the colors and the states using those pictures. So top left chlorine, top right iodine, middle bottom bromine, bottom right is astatine. So we'll leave those up for about another minute just to give you a chance to do that.
Okay, let's make sure we've got these right. Obviously, tick it if you get it right. If you didn't get it right, make sure you've got these written in because they are the correct answers there. So chlorine is a gas and it is green. Bromine is a liquid and it's orange brown in color. Iodine is solid and it's a gray black color. And finally, astatine is a solid and it's black in color. Now, hopefully what we can see from those is that as we go down our group, so from chlorine all the way down to astatine, then what we find is that we go from a gas to a solid. So we start off with fluorine and chlorine of gases, bromine is the only liquid, and then iodine and astatine are solids. And as far as the colours go, we get darker the further down the group we go. So we start with pale yellow for fluorine, green for chlorine, orange brown, then grey black, and then black. So we get darker the further down the group we go, and we change from gas to solid as we go down the group. Next thing to have a go at then is see if you can write down any of the physical properties that we would expect the halogens to have. And once you've got those physical properties, just explain why you pick those for me. So I'll just give you a minute to do this. So the two key ones that I'm hoping you've got written down are that they're brittle when solid and they're poor conductors of electricity. Now, the reason that they've got those two physical properties is because they're typical properties of non-metals. And our halogens being in group seven on that right-hand side of the periodic table, they're all non-metals. So we can just hazard a guess if we don't know and go with properties of non-metals and you've got a good chance of being right. What you've got on the screen at the moment then is a graph that's showing us the melting points and boiling points of the different group seven elements. Now, obviously each of them should have two bars. So the blue one is the melting point, the red one, the boiling point. But what we can see is there's actually one bar missing for fluorine and one bar missing for astatine. So we're missing the melting point for fluorine and the boiling point for astatine. But you should be able to pick out a trend from the ones that you've got there. So all I want you to do at the moment is look at that graph and then write down a sentence that explains the trends for melting point and boiling point for me.
hopefully what we got as the trend then is that as we go down the group then the melting point and the boiling point increase because if we have a little look at chlorine for example we can see that its melting point is minus 101 degrees celsius then when we get to bromine it's minus 7 from iodine it's 114 so it's increasing and the same can be said for the boiling point so they both increase as we go down the group now as we mentioned there's actually bars missing here and one of the questions they could ask you on an exam is to predict what the missing ones actually are now they could give you a graph like this they could give it to you in a table now what we need to do is basically use the data we've been given for the ones in the group because we know the trend we know that it's going to be increasing as we go down the group and then we just need to apply that to work out the missing ones and usually what you will have is a nice range however that range isn't as generous as you may think so don't just look at it and think well it's increasing for the boiling point so astatine as long as it's over 184 it's fine you need to kind of look and work out the differences between them and try to apply it a little bit more carefully so as long as you work out the differences between the ones you've been given and then apply that same pattern to your increase you should be fine in getting that actual answer you don't have to memorize melting points and boiling points you just need to be able to extrapolate the data they've given you this table that I've given you then is the density of the different halogens so I've given you density of four of the halogens there what I want you to do is write down a sentence to sum up the trend in density Hopefully what we can see then is that the density increases as we go down the group. So make sure you've got that trend written down in your books or tick it if you got it right. The next bit we need to move on to is looking at the reactions of the halogens and one of the key ones we need to know is group 7 reacting with metals and what happens is when group 7 react with metals they produce something called a salt so what I've got for you in a moment is a little video of an experiment where we would normally do this in class we've got a jar with chlorine gas and we're going to then add some sodium and make them react together so when you watch the video what I'd like you to do is describe what happens when we've actually added the sodium to the chlorine and then see if you can write both a word and balanced symbol equation for this. So here comes the video. So what we're going to start off with then is our chlorine gas within our conical flask and a piece of sodium metal off to the side. Now we pick up our sodium metal and then we're going to drop it into our conical flask. So we're just going to knock the sodium metal into the bottom where it's sitting in the sand there. Now in order to actually start the reaction we just add a drop of water because we know that sodium and water has quite a violent reaction 
and in the chlorine gas we hopefully saw that bright flash it really lit up quite a lot and now you can see that there's a lot of sort of smoky appearance in there but what we've done is we've combined the sodium with the chlorine so that's what's happening at that point there so that's sodium joining with the chlorine so within there we've now got sodium chloride remember you need to describe what you saw in the video and then write the word and the balanced symbol equation for me so i'm just going to give you about two minutes to have a go at that If we consider the word equation first of all, then hopefully we got sodium plus chlorine makes sodium chloride. Now the key thing here is the endings that we have on the halogen and the salt, the metal halide. So when we write the halogen on its own, they all end I-N-E. So think about it, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, all end I-N-E. So when they're on their own, I-N-E. When they're in their salt, so when it's joined to the metal, notice how the ending changes to I-D-E. And that's true of any of the halogens joining to a metal. So what we do is we write down the name of the metal, then we write the first part of the halogen name, and then we finish it with I-D-E as opposed to I-N-E. If you wrote sodium plus chlorine makes sodium chlorine, it's wrong, okay? You've got to have it as sodium chloride. So at the top, you've got the general word equation, metal plus halogen makes the metal halide. And then at the bottom, you've got the sodium plus chlorine example. If we move into the second box you've got on the screen, then we've got the general balanced symbol equation. So M stands for metal and X is going to stand for our halogen, whatever it may be. And the good news about this is that when we're reacting our metal and our halogen, it's going to be the same. So if you're rubbish at balancing, again, you can just memorize twos in front of the metal and the metal halide, and then you get it right. So the one that we asked you to do was obviously the sodium plus chlorine. So it's going to be 2Na plus Cl2, of course, remembering that subscript 2 for our halogen. And then we're going to make 2NaCl. So give yourself a tick if you got the formulas right, a second tick if you got the balancing right. If you obviously didn't get those, make sure you've got it written down. I'll leave these up for one more minute in case you need anything else written in your books.
Okay, your turn then. Here's a question looking at writing a balanced symbol equation. So have a go at writing the balanced symbol equation for iron reacting with chlorine. I'll give you a couple of minutes. So, iron reacts with chlorine to produce iron 3 chloride. Write the balanced symbol equation for this reaction. Now, what we need to do first of all is obviously underline, highlight, or circle the key bits of information. So, we've got iron reacting with chlorine and it's producing iron 3 chloride. And what we're doing is a balanced symbol equation for this reaction. So, first thing is we can look at the periodic table and we'll find out that iron has the symbol Fe unless of course you already know that. Chlorine is obviously going to be Cl, but remember it's going to be diatomic, so it's got to be Cl2. So we've got to have Fe plus Cl2, and then we're going to make iron 3 chloride. Now, what we need to think about then is the charge we have on each iron. So if we've got iron and then we've got the three in brackets, then that tells us that we're going to be forming Fe3 plus ions. Because remember, the numerals in brackets tell us the charge on the iron. So what we can then do is we think about our chlorine. It's in group seven, so that means it has seven electrons in the outer shell. It's going to gain one more electron, which means it's going to have a single negative charge on the ion. Now remember, in order to actually form a compound, it's got to have no overall charge there. So we've got three positives versus one negative. So in order for these to actually join together to make a compound, we're going to have one iron ion joining with three of the chloride ions because we need three negative charges to cancel out the three positive charges. So one iron ion joins with three chloride ions. So what we'll have up here is FeCl3. Now, if we have a little look, is it balanced? It is not, because we've only got two chlorine here, three chlorine here. So what we need to do is think, okay, what number do both two and three go into? And hopefully you've come up with six. So when it comes to the balancing, then what we need to do is have three in front of here. So that gives us six chlorines on this side. And then we're going to have a two in front of there to give us the six chlorines there. So chlorine, now got the same on each side. But remember that two in front there means we've got two ions as well. But we've only got one on this side. So we also need to put a two in front there. And that's it. That's all we need to do. So just make sure you remember, look in the brackets 
for particularly things like iron and copper and so on and look for the charge that we will then have on the ion. Once you've got that, make sure you balance out so the charges cancel each other and then go back and do the balancing. And that will then hopefully get you your two marks on that question. Next question for you to have a go at then is about reactivity of our halogens. So what happens to the reactivity of halogens as we move down the group and see if you can explain why using ideas on electrons. So a couple of minutes, have a go. As always, tick anything you got right, and if you don't have this, then make sure you write it down, because this is important to know. So with the halogens, as we go down the group, what we see is the opposite trend in their reactivity to what we saw with the alkali metals. Because as we go down the halogens, then they get less reactive the further down the group we go. And the reason for that is linked back into what we said when we looked at why the alkali metals got more reactive as we went down the group, it's to do with the distance of those outer shell electrons from the nucleus. As we go down the group, the outer shell is further from the nucleus, so the force of attraction between the nucleus and the outer shell electrons is weaker. Same explanation that we had for our alkali metals. But with the halogens, they need to gain one more electron. So what we find is having that weaker force of attraction means it's harder to gain that electron and therefore they get less reactive the further down we go because that outer shell is further from the nucleus giving us a weaker force of attraction and making it harder to gain that electron. Your next question then, explain why the halogens all have similar chemical properties using ideas on electrons. Hopefully we manage to remember that any time we're being asked about why any elements in the same group have similar chemical properties, we go to the number of electrons in their outer shell.
So because the halogens are in group 7, they've got 7 electrons in their outer shell, which means they're all going to have similar chemical properties because they're going to gain one electron in reactions to make an ion with a single negative charge. And at the bottom there, I've just given you the general equation there for what's happening. We start off with our halogen, so X2, that's our halogen. Then we're going to have to gain one electron for each halogen atom. So there's two electrons in that case, one for each of them. And then we're going to form two of the halide ions, the X minus ions. So make sure we've got that written down. I'll leave it up for one more minute and then we'll go on to our plenary. So those of you with target grade up to a grade 5, it's the column on the left. Those of you with target grades over a grade 5, it's the column on the right. So have a go at answering those questions for me in your books. I'm going to leave this up for a couple of minutes today. But as always, if you need longer, just hit pause and take as long as you need to do this.